There could be news out there, but certainly we don't want there to be news. Rooting for Iowa football, Iowa athletics, of course. This is March Madness, but we are talking football for the next hour with all of you here at the Voice of College Football, Hawkeyes Live 138. Corey Brad is here, of course, from the Hawkeye of the Storm, the guy that makes it all happen. Please join Corey each and every day at from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Corey, looking good in the driver's <laughs> seat? I'm not the – hey, I am not in the driver's seat. The car is not moving. I'm in the back seat, but I'm here. I'm ready to go. Um, how do you want to address this rumor that's going around right now? How do we want to address that, Mark? Well, you are the one that has possible intel. Well, I have no intel yet. So the rumor, I've had multiple people reach out to me in the last hour. All right. So, and I believe this started on a, on a message board. There, yeah, just We can just throw it out there because I'm sure a lot of people who are listening right now in the chat have not heard this. There is a rumor, quote unquote rumor right now, it began on a message board that would indicate that somehow Caden Proctor might be re-entering the transfer portal. For the record, I am not reporting this. Now, I uh, I reached out to a source that uh, is very close to the situation and have not heard back. That was literally 20 minutes ago. Okay, so I got, the, I got wind of this like half hour ago. This show starts at 4.30, so I've not heard back from my source. Um, so I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, I don't know the, the context. I think there's uh, some speculation that he has, uh, that Caden apparently took himself out of some Iowa player group chats. Um, and there was an, a rumor of some other text message toward a, um, a teammate that he, that would indicate that he was not happy. I don't know. Again, you hate talking about rumors, but in this day and age, Mark, you kind of have to address things like this. And there is the old adage where there's smoke, there's fire. Um, I, I, you know, I, I'm not a guy that tries to get a bunch of scoops on information. That's not how I'm, you know, making this platform work. However, when he jumped to Iowa, um, I, I want to say that, that uh, I was on that story before, most other people, I'm proud to say that on, on, in that case, because that was a situation where um, I had been notified pretty early that he was intending to enter the transfer portal and was told to keep it under wraps. As soon as um, he kind of gave the green light for the media to have that story reported on it and whatnot. But I don't have any inside information on this right now. So I'll wait to see if I hear back from from my source. But I know people are chattering about it on social media. It would be shocking yeah we use that word a lot right shocking but like the guy was at ba like he, he was committed to iowa remember he's committed to iowa mark and then he he jumped to bama played his first year at bama was pretty good right true freshman starting at a tackle position that's hard to do playing at a powerhouse you know and then he he uh saban retires he enters the portal and the consensus from the very start and i can tell you from day one it was not i'm going to enter the portal and look around it was i'm going to enter the portal and go back home that's what he wanted to do from day one that's what's been reported that's what i can tell you on on good authority is what happened now if he were to leave again based on my understanding of the rules even with the one-time transfer rule and mark you and i talked about this ahead of uh going live the NCAA has now updated some of its guidelines regarding multi-time transfers. So guys are being allowed to transfer multiple times within their college career without uh, having to sit out. Okay. Um, now I'm not perfectly up to speed on the bylaws of, of the, the transfer rules, but that's my understanding. We're seeing players do that. You mentioned the guy who's a number of guys that have, manage to find a way to play for multiple schools if but even with the one-time transfer exception mark my understanding of the keaton proctor situation would be he went to bama right he never enrolled at iowa in the first place he was committed to iowa that means nothing all right he signed with bama he's transferred one time he transferred to iowa this past semester if he were to leave again even with the one-time transfer 
exception, he would still have a free transfer because Saban retired. Well, no, I'm sorry. Let, let me get the, let me clarify this. He, he would have the one-time transfer because he didn't use it prior because Saban retired. So the head coach retires, gives players an opportunity to enter the portal during a, a special window of time, which is what he did, transfer to Iowa. So he still has his one-time transfer if we're still – going by the old format where a, a, a guy gets one one free transfer where he doesn't have to sit down. But again, until I get confirmation from somebody close to the Proctor situation, I'm obviously going to remain very skeptical on it. So just so you know, Corey, so it's just so you're aware, we're getting increasing amounts of static. We can still hear you, but uh, I don't know that there's anything you can do about that, but just kind of increasing amounts of static, but based on what I can hear, I, I can hear you. Okay. So this is not somebody who let's say was considering staying at home and then they left for an unfamiliar place like in Alabama in his case, and then had second thoughts about it and decided that wasn't for him. He's coming back to familiar territory. He's coming back home. And so there are two things that come to mind. And this is pure speculation. If in fact, uh, Caden Proctor is, is going to move on, if he's going to uh, make this decision to transfer and I'll maybe reiterate this as soon as Corey comes back, hopefully Corey will be coming back. He's joining us uh, from remote, not in studio. But uh, we were just addressing the rumor and to emphasize rumor out there and there being a little bit of smoke to not substantiate, but at least show that there is possibly, possibly some substance to uh, the rumor about Caden Proctor transferring. But the two reasons that would come to mind for me, and hopefully we've got Corey back Corey. I think I'm still static. -y. No, you were not. You sound clear. Okay. Sound I'm great. So, you're, you sound a little static. -y. If, if it happens again, please let me know and I'll, I'll try something else here, but I am kind of working remotely at the, at the moment. So, so, so I'm coming up with two, what I think are logical conclusions as to why somebody in his position would think about transferring. Because in this case, he is coming back to familiar ground, familiar territory. He is coming back home. It's not like he's experiencing something completely different, a, a different area of the country for the first time and, and then having reservations. So again, this is complete conjecture, folks, and we don't even know if this is a real story. It is a rumor, but that either number one in this day and age of NIL offers, and we know that He's being compensated to some degree. You would have a better idea than I would for sure. It may have even cited those numbers elsewhere, but that something better came along or that there's some kind of soured relationship or something happened, some kind of incident, some kind of confrontation or something that he doesn't like about um, his experience thus far at Iowa. Those are the only two reasonable conclusions I can come to if, in fact, this is the case. Am I still clear, Mark, or am I staticky? You're staticky. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but let, let me uh, try one more thing. Uh, I'll come back because I'm noticing you're coming in staticky and back and forth. And we'll, okay. we'll work on this because I, I want to make sure I get – I heard your question, but I want to make sure I'm clear. So I'll, I'll be right back. Meanwhile, I'm going to check out the chat. Uh, this is our Hawkeye show that we do here each and every Tuesday at the Voice of College Football. And again, Corey Bratta from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Join him on a regular basis. And we've got uh, Jackson in the chat. Jackson, appreciate you being here. As always, uh, earlier in the day, uh, Clemson, it was announced, that filed a lawsuit against the ACC. Please check out uh, that live stream that's over on our main channel. Uh, Ed? Yes? Did the check bounce? Ohio State? Yeah, I think Ohio State's okay financially. <laughs> Maybe he's homesick for Tuscaloosa. Time frame on the portal. Time frame on the portal. That's an interesting question because 
there is a time frame on the portal that is tied to Nick Saban's retirement, that should be expired by now because Nick Saban retired just after the loss to Michigan. However, there is a second transfer portal window following spring practice. So that too is a possibility that uh, Caden Proctor would not announce or anyone until that second spring uh, window opens after spring practice, roughly May 1st. If we can get Corey back, we are also going to talk Iowa quarterback play for 2024. Of course, Duke, Deacon Hill was the guy uh, that took over for Cade McNamara with mixed results. A lot of wins, but a lot of inadequate uh, quarterback play and completion percentage and so forth, even though he improved considerably down the stretch. Bob, what was today's topic before the rumor? Okay, I'll let you guys in on a little secret. Most weeks, even though this looks like a finely tuned show that has been worked on and prepared and well-produced and with a show rundown that has been worked on and tweaked for hours on end, Corey and I usually get together and just Go at it. We just we just uh, basically show up about 10 seconds before we go live with all of you and just decide what we were talking about and going forward. Although it is our intent to hit all the positions in a row and we've done secondary defensive line and linebackers in previous weeks. So we wanted to hit another position. As you can see, Corey's on the road. So uh, he has a lot going on as well. Corey, can you hear me? <laughs> Have you been sitting in silence for the last few minutes? <laughs> no, 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 no. I did not. Uh, I was able to to uh, vamp a little bit. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, so, anyways, your your question on on potential motivations behind if this news is true, or if there's any, I mean, if there's any smoke to that, or any fire to that smoke. Yeah, I mean, relationship. Uh, but I would think, and I don't know Caden um, very well personally, um, know some people in his camp a lot better than I know him. But this type of a move, if it occurred, would to me reek of this era as it relates to NIL. Like that's the only that's the only explanation where it's like, Okay. Yeah. Like I guarantee you there are in, we, I know I mean there can tell you with authority there are schools that have offered him more money than what I was able to give him as it relates to NIL um opportunities. So I mean like I can't put a number on that exactly. So, so let's just play theoretical. Say say uh LSU got win back in whatever that was January that Caden was going to enter the transfer portal and they said, Hey, we'll get you 2 million here. Um, a guaranteed 2 million to come here and you have to play at least two years to get that 2 million, but we'll give you 2 million. We got 2 million waiting for you. You know, maybe Iowa said, Hey, we, we can't get we, the swarm can't offer you 2 million, but we've got opportunities that can at least get you maybe 1.5 million over the course of your career. And he's like, Hey, I want to go home. That's enough for me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to fret over half million. I'm just, this is not based on it. This is just me playing fantasy land. But what I'm saying is think about that scenario, why he could, he might still pick Iowa, even though at the time they were behind in those figures. What if Florida state has come to him in the last few weeks and said, we've got 4 million waiting for you, 4 million guaranteed. Okay. Now that changes the game right? It changes the game. 
Yeah. So I'm not saying that's happened. It could be totally not true. I hope it's not true. Um, but it's not, nothing's unprecedented with stuff like this now. Nothing's unprecedented. It would be a, he would never live it down if he did this. I mean, what he, what, what happened, I went out of high school with his decision to flip to Alabama was such a firestorm and a, just a total mess on social media, a cesspool for him to be welcomed back was a huge, like huge hurdle to overcome. Could you imagine if he did it again, Mark? Like if he, <laughs> and, and a, couple, a couple items here, Corey, related to what you just stated. And then your, your other point in your hypothetical scenario, going back to the hypothetical scenario, I totally get that that it has a high possibility probability of being what's going on to some degree. However, you would think that for somebody who has a definite home school and had some lean because of it being the home school, but decided to go elsewhere. And then as you pointed out, didn't enter the transfer portal and say, I want to explore my opportunities and for two, three weeks was out there looking at various options, just boom, I want to come home. That speaks of somebody who, who knows, I'm a five-star offensive tackle. I just started at Alabama. I can make money anywhere. I was offered me something that's really good. Sure, there could be more money elsewhere, probably is, but this is substantial enough and this is where I want to be. That's That's what it looked like. And so you would think if he's still entertaining all these offers and possibly wooed by one of them, that he would have originally stated that I'm just entering the transfer portal and I, I want to see what my options are. But the, but I'm just saying like, yeah, I get what you're saying, but at the same time, he's still, a, what, a 19-year-old kid who's going to be sure. like, he obviously was swayed before. He committed to Iowa. And then was swayed. I'm not saying it was, you know, primarily due to money. Okay. But again, the scenario I, I ran through a minute ago, that could have transpired. And maybe it's a scenario where maybe there were higher offers. You know, I gave the example of maybe somebody's offering them three, four million to, to go play for their school. Maybe that offer was on the table before. And then maybe he went to Iowa City and was like, okay, this is not quite as great and luscious as I thought it was going to be like just over the first three months, you know, he's gone through the strength program or maybe he's not clicking with teammates or cl clicking with coaches. Like that could tip the scales enough to where, man, I'm here for half as much. And I'm not even, I'm not really even happy. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm just, I'm not surprised by anything. I mean, it is shocking to an extent, but with the, again, this day and age of there's just so much tampering going on. And I heard you earlier on the show talking about the ACC. This is part of what's wrong with with college football now. Like, I am a big college football guy. You are a big college football guy. But, Mark, the tampering, it's ridiculous. It, it should not be allowed, but it's happening. For anybody who says, oh, I was, you know, I was, you know, got hit with a, a small, uh, you know, a minor infraction for tampering with Proctor before. What they got hit with was a coach texting him and saying, keep your head up, young man. Great days are ahead of you. Like, if that's the, that's not what's going on across the country. We have blatant tampering and money offers happening everywhere. That is what's wrong with the sport now. So I hope that's not what ha what's happened. We're just speculating, but it is unfortunate, and we've seen a lot of really good coaches like Nick Saban walk away, I think, in, in part due to the current scene landscape of the sport. And, and then the scenario that you just played out more in terms of what he has already done in his flip from Iowa to Alabama the first go around, and then as, as you were setting up, what if this happens again? Because correct me if I'm wrong, he made that original flip on National Signing Day. I think it was the day before. The day before. Yeah. The day before. Yeah. But basically took 
the fan base right to the wire with this commitment. He did. He did. And I was, I was one of the more forgiving people out there. Cause I'm just like, Hey, you know what? You're not signed up. You're not, you're, you're not signed, sealed and delivered until you are signed, sealed and delivered. And I can understand frustration. If you've got a good friend of yours who's engaged and their fiance breaks, breaks that marriage off at the last second. But guess what? That's better than waiting until after you sign on the dot, dotted line. And so I, I just, I, I was forgiving to that situation. Now if that happens again. I don't know how I'll feel. I mean, I will, I, <laughs> I will not be as forgiving as I was. Um, I think he's a really good young man. I, I, like I said, no people in his camp. And I think he comes from a good family. I know there's been some controversy about his mom and some of the influence she's had on his decision-making, but I just think money really talks. And so if for some reason there's legitimacy to these rumors, my guess is that's what it is. But again, until I hear specifics, um, I'm still, still hesitant. And I got people blowing up my phone right now asking me about it again. So <laughs> we'll uh, try to get some information, Mark. Well, certainly he has every right to make whatever choice that is that he believes is best for him. So I'm not trying to deny his his right. There's a difference between his his right versus what I think would be a, a little bit classier and a little bit more caring and understanding of the fan base. Yeah. Yeah. Circle Herc in the chat. Fool me, fool me once, twice scenario, right? Fool me yeah. once, shame on me. Fool me twice. Well, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So I don't expect fans, if that happens, if there's legitimacy to it and it happens, I am not an advocate for going off after the kid on social. I'm not an advocate for going after people on social media ever. I just think that's such a pathetic way to go about your life, especially when it comes to sports. But I am not going to be going on the air, Mark, saying, let's give this kid a break. Like, let's let's understand. Like, no, no. If you do it again, exactly what Circle Herc says is exactly true. Like, that's 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 crappy. <laughs> that's crappy. And I'm not saying if I was in that situation, like. Again, money talks. I get it. But um, what you said is fair, too. If you were thinking if you're having second thoughts about Bama a few months ago then use that opportunity to entertain those offers and make a decision. You've already changed your mind twice or, or made a decision twice. Don't let it, this would be number four. This would be his fourth decision in like a year. <laughs> his fourth decision. He decides to go to Iowa. Then he decides to go to Bama. Then he decides to go to Iowa. Then he decides to leave Iowa. I mean, that would be four different decisions in the course of a year. Yeah. That's not going to rub people the right way. And he shouldn't expect for it to. That would be, de and it'll be devastating. It will be devastating to that offensive line. It just will be because he's a big piece. I mean, there's no, there's no question about it. He's a guy that'd be coming in and would be a, a plug and play starter. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's odd. And spring practice hasn't even started yet. Here, here's the other thing. Um, I did see it was reported this morning. Uh, I believe it was Scott Docterman of The Athletic did tweet out some roster number uh, adjustments, and he tweeted out a roster number adjustment for Caden Proctor. Proctor's been given the number 74, which was the, his high school number, and I believe was his number at, at Bama. But Trevor Lauk, I believe, had that number prior. Lauk's number, I think, has been changed to 59. So as of this morning, I don't believe Scott Docterman or anybody on the beat, I have not talked to Tom Cake or anybody on the beat, had any knowledge of any of this. So if there's any room for encouragement, there you go. But things happen fast in this world, Mark. I can imagine uh, Lauk would have every opportunity to have a chip on his shoulder to say, hey, I gave up my number for this guy and he didn't stick around. And Mark, Lauk was a four-star tackle too. I mean, not a five-star, but he's a four-star. So, um, you know, he's someone who has not seen the field yet, but I mean, the ch whole chip thing, like a lot of the, him, him coming to Iowa, regardless of what is actually true and not true, the, the Caden Proctor situation, 
should put a chip on every one of those guys' shoulders anyways. Because in a way, like you're excited to have them there, but I would think you would have a level of resentment. And I, and I know that sounds bad, but a, a positive motivation to where this guy's getting all the attention. You know, if I'm Trevor Locke, right, I'm a four-star kid. I paid my dues. I haven't flip-flopped. I'm going to go in there and prove to be the best tackle on this team. Like that's the kind of spirit I think competitively that you want. And even if somehow these rumors are true and he leaves, then it's more motivation. But boy, you sure hope he doesn't because he's a, he's a special talent regardless. And so as Corey confirmed right off the top, rumor, this is a rumor that has some smoke out there on various sites is all it is at this point. But um, it's out there enough for Corey to be um, addressing it here. And of course, his phone blowing up currently. So one guy that's not going to be pleased if Caden Proctor leaves is, of course, the starting quarterback, most likely Cape McNamara, uh, because he needs every protection possible to keep him uh, upright and healthy and mobile and starting a quarterback. And I think Corey has unfortunately left us. Maybe he'll recognize that he is, uh, his feet is frozen, but uh, you're back. Uh, oh, I'm trying. I'm trying, Mark. <laughs> you are back. trying. Here you're giving go. it your best. I appreciate it. Here we uh, go. I was just segueing. I was doing the segue uh, in terms of the Caden Proctor situation and one guy in particular who would, also be um, certainly hurt by Caden Proctor's absence would be whomever wins the starting quarterback position. Of course, that should be Cade McNamara, uh, and especially for a quarterback who has not been a healthy quarterback for the last two seasons. Yeah, we were going to preview quarterbacks today, weren't we, Mark? We were. <laughs> that was on our docket. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so, so Cade McNamara is uh, – not expected to be full go this spring. Spring practice, by the way, in case people don't know, is supposed to start tomorrow. So, like, <laughs> full perspective on all this. It's supposed to start tomorrow. One more note, Corey, on the Proctor situation would be if Nick Saban retired right after, within a couple of days after the Rose Bowl, then that 30-day window extension for that portal window is gone. Proctor shouldn't be able to, now he can announce that he will be entering the transfer portal, but that next window is not going to open until after spring practice has concluded. Yeah. So he doesn't I'm need to be part saying, of a spring. He doesn't need to be part of a spring practice. Oh, I understand that. I'm just kind of clarifying that he's yeah. not going to be able to enter the portal instantly. No, no. And that's, I bet you, you don't care if that's yeah. happening. If there's smoke to that, sure. He can, he can, he can just not be with the team this spring figure out where he's going on the uh, under the, I don't want to say under the table, but y you know what I'm saying? He can figure out where he's going before he's even in the portal. You know, I mean, that's just the reality of it. Like who cares when the official window opens? Um, I, I hope that's not true. Like I say, <laughs> uh, this is kind of like an instant reaction type of deal because I, you and I have no insider information on this and I actually am less up to speed on what's going on. Not only because I have not talked to anybody with with Caden's camp yet, but also because we hopped on here right away. So I'm not on social media. I'm not looking. I've got a like I said, my phone's blowing up with people asking me what in the world's going on. I got our guy Kyle who helps over at the show texting me. So, um, and if I get, I'll, I'll be honest. If I get a call in the next half hour here before the end of our show, I'll log off, take the call, and then come back on here and report back. <laughs> so I don't know if that'll happen. I guess that'd be good. It'd be good television, right, Mark? We ought to change. You ought to change. We probably should change the title of this stream. Absolutely, we should. Like so. I will right now as we get into this quarterback conversation. And then, what are you prepared to do? I don't know what your your plans are. You're on the road, obviously. But if this needs to be addressed over on your channel, in terms of once we do know what the facts are. <laughs> Can we not think that far ahead, Mark? Is that possible? <laughs> no, I'm just, I'll, I'm just I'll address to help it. Produce your channel. We've got a men's NIT uh, post game show tonight, and then we've got, um, well, we've got women's 
basketball this weekend, but no, I figure out where there's a will, there's a way. So, uh, uh, I'm, I'm prepared to talk about quarterbacks. We can definitely do that. Yeah. So Caden Proctor, there was so much excitement and that had to be the biggest talking point that you and I, and anyone who talks Iowa football was focused on at this point last year and what kind of difference he would make. And, you know, we had our both agreements and disagreements about what the impact could be, but we were generally on the same page as to what Iowa was getting in Cade McNamara. And that's not a Heisman trophy type quarterback, but a, uh, a very strong leader, a guy that knows how to manage a game, manage an offense, lead an offense, be a leader on the field, played in championship games. And unfortunately, we didn't get to see enough of him to see whether that was going to translate to Iowa City. Uh, and we did see him for a period of time and he wasn't good, right? <laughs> like he was dinged up. He wasn't good. Um, I think it's been well documented how I feel just confidence wise level confidence level wise as it relates to the quarterback position i got a lot of question marks i think it should be absolutely be a 100 percent open competition this spring and frankly if i'm if i'm marco linez i'm vying for the job this fall uh, iowa went let's not forget iowa had uh, there were reports that iowa had the kid from uh, oregon scheduled to come in and visit former five star thompson that ended up going to the lane Ty Thompson. So he was scheduled to come to, to Iowa on a visit. He ended up committing to Tulane. I don't know as it relates to the reasoning behind that, if he got an offer from Tulane or if Iowa retracted their interest. But um, that proves that Iowa's got some hesitancy with putting all their chips in on the Cade McNamara uh, table. And like you said, Mark, they've already done that once. <laughs> okay. And I know injuries are, you know, sometimes freak things, but um, they, they saw what life after Cade McNamara looks like. So that should encourage them, I think, not only to look at people in the portal, but also to do everything they can to get people like Marco Linez up to speed. Um, and especially if Cade McNamara is out, like we expect him to be this spring, I'd be giving Marco every one of those one reps because I think his upside without question is exponentially higher than Deacon Hills. And then you have James Rezar, but he's not there till summertime. So uh, Joe Labus is gone. Um, you got Tommy, Pahal Tommy Pahalski, the, um, I guess you call him a legacy recruit. He's a, a walk-on. Of course, his dad was a really successful player at Iowa. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's an open competition, obviously, with Marco's legs. You love the ability of, of, you know, what you saw on tape from a playmaking standpoint in the Citrus Bowl or in the uh, whatever bowl game that was. <laughs> what, what was that bowl game? What what game did they it play? Was in? The Citrus Bowl. Yes. The was Citrus. it the Citrus Bowl? Yeah. You nailed <laughs> it. A little, a little, like, a little like, uh, I care. But anyways, um, <laughs> uh, so anyways, but yeah, that's 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 what I would say. I think I think um, you know they're they're going to be uh, they're either going to be going to the portal after the spring practice period, or they better figure out a way. And I think maybe some of that will come down to what do they see in spring? Ideally with Tim Lester now coaching quarterbacks, he's going to be able to revamp things and give Kirk a real assessment. Unlike any assessment they've had in recent time, a real assessment of quarterback play to where he can look Kirk in the face and say, I believe we have something with, with Kirk, with uh, Marco Linez, or I believe we have something, even if you can't imagine him saying this, but I believe we have, a guy who's ready to plug and play in Deacon Hill. Um, but the injury thing, you just can't predict. So like, I don't know how he can go to Kirk and say, I think we're good with Cade because he's, he's coming off two knee injuries and he's not going to be practicing this spring. So, and you're not going to see James Rezar. So I think a lot of it comes down to Marco Linez, Mark. Now, right after the season, once we started to, review personnel, look ahead, talk transfer portal. You know that I was pounding the table about uh, a, a quarterback and pursuing a quarterback. You had real concerns. You know, I was living in fantasy land a little bit and just whatever you need to do, you were living more in the reality of the roster limitations and the scholarships. So how much more work needs to be done there? Because it seems like you're a lot more open to pursuing a quarterback now than you were a couple months ago. Yeah, I mean, 
I, I guess, yeah, you're right. The, my main concern has been scholarship numbers and lack thereof and the fact that they're already above the limit. Um, but I have confidence in Tim Lester. If he doesn't see the type of progress with Marco Linez that they need to see, then, yeah, I do think going to the portal is probably a reasonable thing to do because I don't know that you can expect James Rezar to come in there and light fall camp on fire. That's just not something that happens at Iowa and happens very few places. So, and I have very little to no confidence in Deacon Hill. And I'm very, very um, speculative on the health of Cade McNamara moving forward. So I just, I, people know I'm a big Marco Linez advocate. I think he's got more upside than we've seen at that position in this room um, in a long time. But based on, scuttlebutt and the few snaps we saw from him in the citrus bowl his arm is not where it needs to be to be a starting big 10 quarterback his legs are um i have no doubt the head on his shoulders is but so i mean i i mean again it just depends on his development this spring and i just hope they give him that opportunity as don patterson preaches equal snaps against equal competition and again there's only two scholarships that are going to be full go um, as far as we're aware, two scholarship quarterbacks full go this spring. One of them's name is Deacon Hill, who we saw a large sample size from last year, who's never going to be a real mobile guy. And then the other is Marco Lenez, who's an athlete and is raw and is now a year into the program and potentially the future. This could be the best defense in the Big Ten. I really like the tight ends, of course. That's an obvious statement. But I also like the running backs on this team. I think that they've got a really good running back room. Um, the wide receiver position needs some serious work. Maybe they have the pieces in play to, to do something there. The offensive line should be better than it is. Uh, if they get a quarterback, that's why I'm so adamant about going to get a quarterback. I just think that this could be a top three to four team in the Big Ten. It could be with, with really good, solid quarterback play. Uh, again, it doesn't have to be an exceptional a dynamic guy that does anything um, otherworldly. All right. We will take your comments here in the chat. So preseason champions, Ohio, that's exactly what we were looking at. There is, there is um, speculation out there based on message boards, based on some other people that believe that they have some sort of connection, or maybe they do, again, until it's <laughs> confirmed. It's all speculation, but there's enough out there for Corey to be bothered by a lot of people uh, blowing up his phone and for us to see it all over uh, online. Um, and Corey just alerted me of it, right, when we started to prepare to do the show that Caden Proctor could be, once again, leaving Iowa. And, and that would be unfortunate, just not even as an Iowa fan. I just think that's unfortunate for the way college football is being treated and how it's being conducted. Uh, and so hopefully that is not the case. Yes. As Ed says here, he's going to break your heart twice without ever playing a snap. Uh, the, the foolishness that is college football recruiting, uh, at least the media game that's played and the social media and the anticipation, I have just, besides what I do here in terms of talking to all of you and bringing on uh, media members that cover the sport and cover recruiting and trying to stay on top of it as much as possible in terms of your attachment to these players, I would stay far, far away from that as much as possible. That I would stay away from. We, of course, appreciate you being here at the Voice of College Football. We are live all day, all over the place. We've got Nebraska Live coming up next. That's at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. We've got 
Also, our Michigan show with John DiAdamo hosting. That's at 8 o'clock Eastern and 7 Central. And then we also went live earlier today with the Clemson news of their lawsuit against the ACC. And uh, now with Clemson and Florida State both taking the ACC to court, I think the days are numbered. So hopefully Corey is able to substantiate for us something here uh, in the next few minutes. And if not, uh, sometime in the next few hours on his channel. Again, he's got post game uh, coming up with men's and women's. Uh, Corey is going to be the next Jim Zabel. There you go. Love it. I don't know who Jim Zabel is, but uh, if that's a compliment, absolutely. Also, Saul, even though I did not follow up on this and we didn't really prepare to talk about Iowa Pro Day, I certainly did see that come down with... Uh, some speculation about Cooper DeGene moving to another position. So, no, maybe that is, that must be other position switches. Okay, that does not involve Cooper DeGene, but I'm, I'm reading from The Athletic and uh, Pro Day. Cooper DeGene's Pro Day is coming up on April 15th. Okay. Iowa's Pro Day was on Monday. The Atlanta Falcons must not be too, too high on uh, this group of Iowa Hawkeyes. They were the only NFL team not to show up at Pro Day. Players' participation ranged from minimal to none. No, Cooper DeGene, punter Tory Taylor, defensive tackle Logan Lee, tight end Eric All. Of course, you Iowa fans didn't get to see him much. To those seeking a likely free agent path like receiver Nico Ragiani, defensive tackle Noah Shannon, offensive lineman Rusty Feth, defensive end Joe Evans. Would love to see Joe Evans stick in the NFL and be able to play. Uh, just because he was so good in college and one of the better players at his position in the last 10 years uh, for the Hawkeyes. It would be great to see Joe Evans be able to, to make it, even though he doesn't have the measurables. All right. I was doing a patchwork job on uh, Iowa's Pro Day, so it's oh. good to see you back. Well, it could start coming in staticky again. I'm having all kinds of problems. I got devices dying. I got Google accounts signing me out. Uh, I had to create a new Google account. And uh, anyways, I'm here, Mark. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, that being the case, I, I didn't know if you left us because maybe you were taking an important phone call. That's what my hope was. No, I uh, wish that was what it was, but. Unfortunately, that device where I'd be taking that phone call is dead. So I won't be able to get that phone call until I get some power to that device. So Okay. Well, why, why don't we do this? Let's wrap up the quarterback conversation, and then we'll let you go so you can be on your way. Thanks for making this happen, being on the road. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we just talked about Kate McNamara not really showing us much in a game and a half. Or was it two and a half games? No, he, oh, never, he never stepped on the field against Iowa State, did he? No, he did. No, it was uh, it was in game four that he hurt himself. Okay. Yeah, because they uh, he played against I uh, Utah State, Iowa State, Western Michigan, and then uh, got hurt against. Uh, wait a minute. Let's see here. No, he pl he played against Penn State as well, didn't he? Yeah, he did. No, that's, that's right. he no. Did. It was game five. He didn't get hurt until the Michigan State game, correct? Or am I am I wrong in that? 
Maybe will... he got hurt at Penn State. I'd have to go back. He played at least three and a half games. Okay, so back to where we were when you left us, and that was about the pursue, pursuit of a transfer quarterback because as I was sizing up the team on both sides of the ball briefly, with capable quarterback play, really good quarterback play, I know that Ohio State's getting all the attention and Michigan's the defending champions and USC and Oregon are the pot shots coming in from the West Coast, but this could be a top three or four team in the Big Ten. That's with really good quarterback play, or you said yes, quarterback play with a top five quarterback in the Big Ten. Yeah, don't don't put your don't bank on that happening. <laughs> That's why they need to go get somebody. Oh my goodness, that ain't happening, Mark. That, th- listen, they'd be fortunate if they have a top ten quarterback in the Big Ten. Eight, 18 teams in this conference. Um, now I know o- Oregon lost its quarterback. Washington lost its quarterback. Ohio State kind of lost its quarterback. Michigan lost its quarterback. Minnesota lost its I mean, like, everybody lost their quarterback, right? Um, but at the same time, when has Iowa had top half production at the court? I mean, you could argue under Nate Stanley, production-wise, they were top half at times. Probably 2017, they were, were top half. But, I mean, like, Oregon, who did Oregon just get? Didn't they bring in somebody Dylan, from the? Yeah, they brought in Dylan Gabriel from Oklahoma. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so they they're doing. They okay. brought in. Ga- okay, I I've never heard of him before, Mark. <laughs> Dylan Gabriel. So I mean, yeah, I mean, can Marco Linez be that kind of a guy? I don't think Cade McNamara can be that guy. Like I think Cade McNamara, if healthy, is the safest option for this program. And I thought that when he transferred in a little over a year ago. But the biggest upside right now is with Marco Linez. And long-term, maybe it's with James Rezar. I don't know. A lot of people are high on that young man who's got a, a really fast um, 40 time and and uh, or 100-meter time and is an athlete and is big. Uh, it kind of – I don't know who you'd, who you'd compare him to, maybe like a Josh Allen. I don't know if that's fair to Josh Allen. Poor man's Josh Allen. That's what he looks like on tape in high school. But, um, yeah, I just don't think that Cade McNamara is going to give you that, especially coming off two knee injuries. He was never that when he was healthy at Michigan. He was a game manager, and that's okay. You can be a game manager, and that's what Kirk Ferentz wants. Um, now with Tim Lester, hopefully, you know, some of that changes, and they can they can be more innovative with play calling and with scheme and and uh, approach. But in order for that, I don't think that they're going to be much above the – halfway mark of the Big Ten as it relates to quarterback production with Cade McNamara. Maybe they can surpass that with Marco if he's up to speed, but that's going to take some development. See, I was serious in my evaluation of Cade McNamara when he was signed. There were a lot of people that were I, I maybe... wasn't. Hey, I didn't jump on the bandwagon. I, I was letting you know, I remember in a number of conversations that there was a reason that he was leaving Michigan, that he was no JJ McCarthy. But did I ever, but did I ever, well, first of all, that comparison is null and void anyways. Um, But second of all, did, did I ever make him out to be the next great thing? No, I, I do recall there at one point that you had questions about, okay, well, he started a championship season, then, Here's J.J. McCarthy, and they're battling for the job. So is there a comparison? Is is he – he's obviously been in this quarterback battle for a reason. And, again, just try to make it clear that uh, there was a good bit of distance between J.J. McCarthy and Cade McNamara. So probably no more Corey. He's probably left us for the last time. He's killed one phone. The other one is dying, but we appreciate Corey making the best of efforts. Maybe we'll hang out for just a couple minutes to see if Corey comes on back. There he is. He's going to give it one more go. (laughs) Incredible. (laughs) One more go here. Incredible. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, but remember what I said before the season last year, Mark, I said, Cade McNamara is going to dis- disappoint a lot of Hawkeye fans. 
I'll go back and pull the tape. I made that statement before the start of the season. I, before he got hurt, I said he is going to disappoint a lot of people. I, I said that. Uh, now, I did say I thought he was the perfect thing for Iowa at the time, and I, I stand by that. Especially with I thought so, guy, too. Especially with having a guy like Brian Ferentz that just needed somebody that was well-seasoned and understood quarterback play, like he'd come from the Jim Harbaugh system. And No, I thought he was what they wanted, but and what they needed, but the problem is he got hurt, and Brian Ferentz's play calling still, you know. So, anyways, I think now with Tim Lester, that gives you reason to think that, hey, maybe they can be more innovative with play calling, and that'll help them utilize a talent like Marco. And he's a year older. Like, Marco, nobody ex- – I didn't expect Marco to come in year one and, and set the world on fire, and nobody had confidence in Joe Labus based on what we saw the year prior in the Music City Bowl. So are you going to be more optimistic about this team if Marco Lyonez somehow wins this quarterback job, that they've got an athletic quarterback who could beat out a veteran quarterback, that he must be something – we'll probably finish this conversation sometime next week. Uh, if Corey jumps back on, we will uh, – let it go from there. We do appreciate everyone being here at the Voice of College Football. If you missed the conversation concerning Caden Proctor, it is a possibility. Let's just leave it at that. Rumor, it is a rumor. So um, we know that many of you are joining us because of the Caden Proctor um, rumor, but it is no more than that at this point. I'm going to be staticky, I know. Um, so... <laughs> well, it, well. We, we can pick up the uh, the quarterback situation and the positional breakdowns in future weeks. Day one of practice is when? Tomorrow. Okay. Yep. Do you expect to hit any practices before the spring game? Uh, that's a good question. I don't have plans to. I'll definitely be at the spring game. Uh, the, uh, let's see, mid to late April. I have to look at the calendar. It's like April 20th or whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll find out on this Caden stuff what's true very, very soon because spring practice starts tomorrow. Uh, and you know that, that the media, Iowa media, I mean, again, I'm, my phone's dead, so I can't, <laughs> I can't contact anybody right now anyways. But um, if people follow me on Twitter, I'll, I, if I get any updates, I will, will relay that information in the ASAP. Okay. Everybody join Corey tonight, men's and women's post. Men's NIT post game show after the 8 p.m. game against Kansas State. Who's women? Who are the uh, women playing? Uh, actually, uh, it's Sacred Heart and uh, no Presbyterian and Holy Cross is the 16 seed game. That play in game is tonight on ESPNU. The winner of that game plays I on Saturday. Gotcha. Good stuff. Corey Bradda from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Corey, um, safe travels. Appreciate you being here. And we will catch up with you soon. And most of these people watching will see you again tonight. Thanks, Corey. Folks, we've got Nebraska Live coming up at uh, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. So that's right here in about a half hour. So join us then. we got Michigan Live with John DiAdamo at 8 o'clock Eastern. And again, uh, big news concerning Clemson football and their lawsuit against the ACC uh, live stream earlier today. We also have a college football playoff contract that's been signed. And so we will do something on that at some point here very soon as well. Right here at the Voice of College Football. See you next Tuesday.